guarding the house, and in fact, it's his own house. It's, it's kind of like that movie, I forget, what was it called, that Samuel Jackson movie, you know, where he's a police officer in the neighborhood. You know the one I mean, the recent movie? Anyway, he's, and, and this family moves in, and they have this awful time because Samuel Jackson is just, just defensive and protective, and he goes off the edge. Some of you have seen that movie. Uh, I don't remember what it's called, but, um, sorry? Lakeview Terrace, exactly, thank you. Uh, and, and so this, this guy's protecting his house, his concern with keeping his house in order, with keeping his possessions safe, and then a much stronger man comes in, not only takes his stuff, but takes his armor as well. That's the picture we're given in these verses. And, and Jesus is saying, this is what I've come to do. I've come to take this strong man, the devil, Satan, the one who wants to keep you in a religious box, all right, never have you experienced real intimacy with God, real friendship with God, okay, and, and, he, and he overturns that house, and he takes away the possessions, and he says, uh, you know, Jesus is not saying he's a bad robber, but he's saying he's stronger than the strong man. He's stronger than the one who wants to keep us in that in that self-contained uh, box, never experiencing real intimacy and friendship with God. And then he says, look, you've got to choose one or the other. Verse 23, he who is not with me is, not, is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters. You're going to be on one side or the other. There's no more fence sitting allowed. You either got to fully lean on, as Marianne was saying, fully lean on God and community and stick together or try to hold down your fort, or you know, try to hold your possessions. Try to hang on and see what happens. You know, lean on God, lean on the community of believers, or try to stick it out on your own. Try to guard your own house, your own self, your own life, your own stuff, your own future. See what happens. Then he goes on and tells the story of the wandering spirit. How about that story of, of the evil spirit who's wandering in dry places? And this comes out of the, the background in the Middle East that the desert is this desolate place where these, not only do the, the winds blow, you know, and it's a really harsh place to live, but there are evil spirits out there just roaming around looking for a place to settle in. And, and so he tells the story of the wandering spirit. And I guess to translate it into our, our time, suppose you had an apartment that you owned and you were renting out this apartment to, to some tenants and maybe you have several of them and, and the rent checks are coming in on time, everything's going well, they're good tenants, You've, you check periodically, things are going well. Um, and then you take a, a vacation and you go away for a couple of months. And when you come back, you're expecting those rent checks to be there. And when you get back, you find that there, is, uh, there are two checks missing from this one apartment. They've stopped paying their rent. And so you get alarmed and, and try to find out what's going on by making some phone calls. You can't get any answers, so you make the three-hour drive to the place where you own the apartments. And when you get there, you open the door to the apartment, you let yourself in because nobody's answering, and you find that there's a guy living there. But it's not your tenant. It's a squatter. And he's come in, he's in there, you know, things are kind of messy because the electricity's been turned off, the water's been turned off. Your tenant just left the house empty and the squatter came in. And so you deal with the squatter, you get the police, you find him, a, a, you, you, they, they contact social services, they find him a shelter, and you get your apartment all cleaned up, you list it with a realtor, and you go back, drive the three hours back to Oxnard. And, and, and you don't think about it for, for a few weeks. And suddenly you get a call from the police that the neighbors are complaining about the people living in that apartment. <laughs> and you're like, what? What people living in my apartment? There's nobody living there. You go back up there and you find not only has that guy come back, but he's brought seven of his friends. And the place is totally destroyed. And they're, they're, the toilets aren't working. It's just garbage everywhere. It's, they've broken the drywall. It's just nasty. Well, this is what Jesus is saying here. He says... If you deal with evil by simply correcting the one thing and then leaving the house empty, guess what's going to happen? That's going to come back sevenfold, and it's going to smack you in the face, and it's going to destroy you. 
And it goes to the way we deal with sin and evil in our lives, in our communities, in our families. That we can't just, the religious response to evil is to modify behavior, is to deal with the one thing but never put anything else in its place. And that's uh, some of the model of this, this ministry reality changes that we're starting. We're saying, guys, don't go down the path of gang and drugs and all that, but we're gonna give you something better in its place. And for us, you know, as, as Christians, what is, how does that translate? It means that, that when we deal with sin in our lives, when we deal with evil, you know, the, whether it's demonic, spiritual, or whether it's just simply our own sinful nature has gotten control of us, we not only have to deal, by, deal with it by repenting and removing that bad behavior, we have to put something far better in that house. There's a wonderful little booklet called My Heart Christ's Home by Robert Munger. It was written probably 30, 40 years ago, and it talks about how Jesus, how we can invite Jesus into every room of our house, our life. Uh, and Munger talks about the, the intellectual part and the, the emotional part, our relationships, our, our finances, um, how we treat people that are different than us, justice and compassion. And if we, if we pay attention to those things and look to the Lord every day and invite Jesus into those areas of our lives and focus on him and lean on community knowing that we can't do it alone, our house is gonna be filled with guess who? Jesus. And guess who's not gonna have any way of getting in? The enemy, evil, the squatters, those guys who come in and, and wanna destroy and wanna lead us down the wrong paths. Keep Jesus in your house. Don't be so, so concerned with what the paint looks like on the outside, that the shutters are neat, that the roof is repaired, that everything looks good to the neighbors. Make sure that the Lord is in your life. And, and, and if there are areas where you feel like you're, you're weak, look to him, lean on him. He'll make you stronger. That's the difference between religion that looks nice on the outside, empty on the inside, and real spirituality, where Jesus is really living in a vibrant way in each and every area of your life. Well, as Jesus was saying these things, uh, he heard from an old lady in the crowd. I don't know if she was old or not, but I'm just imagining that she is. But she's probably, she's probably the age of, of, of his mother. And his, and his mother is probably about, well, old in those days, 45 or so, and not so old now. And, and, and this woman says, blessed is the mother who gave you birth and nursed you. What was she saying? She's saying, man, I would love to be your mother. <laughs> I recognize what you're saying is true. I would love to be able to take credit for giving you birth and nursing you and raising you. You're awesome, Jesus. And Jesus comes back at her and says, far better than taking credit for me, far better than being able to say he's mine, is the one who, who simply hears the word of God and does it. And that's what I want to leave you with today. Far better, the one, far better than the one who says, I'm a Christian, is the one who has that relationship with God and who seeks to look, who looks to Jesus every day and who invites Jesus into every room of his or her house. And so I'd encourage you to make your heart Christ's home. And, and to give over to him and to let him into those areas of your life where you're really struggling and to, and to lean on your brothers and sisters in Christ because we can't do it alone.